you, you realize it makes you a lot more thankful. So yeah. much more thankful. Oh, yeah. My, and I've certainly cried into fur many times. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, it's been a horrible day. I can't believe what I've seen or heard about. But um, and speaking of that, you know, we had actually some good bills come up at the last session in Frankfurt. But with all of the between the pandemic, between just a lot of the drama that went on in Washington and in Frankfurt, Nothing got done. You know, yeah. we didn't get any bills passed. And we had one that uh, we're going to start again with the next, you know, when the next session fires up. Because there's a couple of people in there that actually supported the bills and w- wanted to introduce them. But it just, and I'd put on Facebook, you know, call and support, call and support. But I don't think they even cared, you know, to address it because they were so tied up in their own politics and their own yeah. partisan things. But the uh, making animal cruelty a felony was one of the things and i see on facebook i've i used to be what i called a facebook editor because i'd go and say this isn't right you you've misunderstood and i do it sometimes but i don't Mm -hmm. a lot um you will see and even news organizations will report this that president trump had signed in to effect a bill making animal cruelty a felony no he had signed a bill that made a very narrow definition of animal cruelty a felony not all animal cruelty and it's something that we hardly ever see in these parts we see it but not very much what is it it's called crushing crushing what is that people step on animals small Uh, animals yeah okay yeah yeah and it had tidied up that law a little bit because there was some loose ends in that and but it's not like the people who starve the dogs or who beat the dogs or who do anything like that so we still need to get that bill passed you know we still need to get animal cruelty a felony and everybody's like oh it's already you know a felony no it's not what no. how i wonder how they can do that like how they can pick and choose what forms of abusement is a felony it should just be abuse it is so on, on the line you i don't know think. why they have to like i don't know why they have to get so freaking technical whenever it comes to <laughs> it's easier laws like to this. get a technical one passed than a broad-based one um when as we have talked about maybe the last time i was here you know the last bill kentucky passed was the year before last and that was the, was the uh, horse one about having sex with animals yes yes yeah. and that finally got passed and you would not believe the feedback that special interest groups put in on that trying to fight that I mean, really. I mean, there. So I think that the um, felony what? bill that Trump signed, there was a group of people who really wanted to fight that issue, so they wrote it just for that and got it passed. Okay, I can I, I can see their reasoning now. What what were their arguments for fighting against the bill that they did pass? There are special interest groups that I won't say on here, but if you meet me in the street, I'll tell you everybody, <laughs> uh, and, and that believe animals are property, animals are disposable, and animals are here just to be used by us. And they don't like any animal humane law. I mean, they have fought us consistently. When I say us, I mean people who work harder than me at this, but I like to try to help too. They find everything, and and for this, for the um, bestiality law, they said, well, uh, farmers won't be able to artificially inseminate their. I was going to ask uh, about that. I, I was going to ask if that was the case because that would be an issue that I would think of if I was yeah. a farmer. But the bill didn't even address. I mean, the it would not have even been covered under the way the bill was written. But they spread that word out. Oh, so, so, so the farmers, what, what, what the, what they do with that, that wouldn't have been affected. They would have still been able yes. to do that with their animals. Yes. And, okay. Then, yes. yeah, that's that, that's business as usual. That's not a form of cruelty. You know, it's yeah. not. And, and it's not selling a dog for sex. You know. Exactly, or doing even worse. Yes, even worse. Yeah, I mean. So it's, but, it's free. It's, it's rumors. It's mm-hmm. the, the fake media that people spread across social media or just eat the gossip, too, out in yeah. the streets. Drives me crazy. Oh, and the special interest group, though, the one I'm talking about, they're very powerful. They have people on every board. I mean, they have gotten – they know, they're smart enough to know if we can get in Frankfurt and get ourselves on committees and get ourselves, you know, some of our people even elected – We can fight all these bills. And even in their handbook of their organization, they say we do not support any 
giving animals any rights. You know, they just come out and say it. Wow. What, how heartless do you have to be Yes. To, to, whenever I accidentally step on my cat or something and they're walking under me, I like I'll hold them. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'll just I'll feel I'll feel bad for hours mm-hmm. after that. But for somebody to for animals not to have rights. So I looked this up I, in most states. Child abuse is a felony or sometimes a less serious offense. But in most states, it's a felony for child abuse. And animals, I look at them as my children. Mm-hmm. It's the closest thing that I've got to them Me right too. now. I mean, and that that's and they really are my kids. I feed them. I make sure they have all the medications that they need to if they get sick. I I take care of them just like I would a child. And to me, they are my fur babies. Yes. So if child abuse is a felony, I think that Animal abuse should be, too. Yes. Most animals are better than children. Yes. Yeah. Mine are better behaved than some children, certainly. <laughs> yeah. and, and even if you don't like animals, even and because, I, you, again, you'd be surprised how many, when we're doing a fundraiser and I'm out there in the public, people will come up to me and like, why are you doing this? Why don't you support children charities? And I do support children charities. You know, I work. I also yeah. uh, do fundraisers for uh, child cases and stuff. But I'll always ask those people, it's like, tell me your charity that you donate to. Give me a, a contact person and I will donate right now. None of them can give me. Ah, it's just yes. scrapping. It's just scrapping. It, yeah. And, that, and that's, yeah, that's it. Yeah. A lot of people do that nowadays. Oh, they do. They just want to have an opinion and they just want to be opposite of what you say. But f- even if you don't care about animal abuse, you should know research has proven without a doubt that there is a direct correlation between people who start out abusing animals, move on to children, move on to other people who are helpless, like the elderly, mm-hmm. you know. And Yeah, I, I seen this one thing on Facebook one time. It was like the line of abuse. Like it had one, it had a boss yelling at a guy. Mm-hmm. Then the guy goes home and yells at the wife. And the wife yells at the son. And the son yells at the animal. Yes. And that's that. Yeah. It, yes. It, and anything, like, like how they say a smile is contagious. Yes. So is abuse. So, yes. And... Um, I, I have an article that was written by uh, another good friend who has been putting it to uh, like your county attorneys and showing them this information. So and let social workers. So when you see when they visit a home and see abuse of an animal, you know, right now they there's not really a lot of things you can do about that. Mm-hmm. But if you can get the county attorneys to know that. Eventually, that's going to go on to that child, you know, that they're going Mm -hmm. to get tired of abusing that animal or it's going to die or run away. And they're going to start on the child because that's what the facts have proven, that they do go on to children. Maybe they can get something done there, you know, because your first line are your social workers and your people who see it in the homes. You know, so and, and, and you do see that, like uh, my wife, she likes a lot of these uh, serial killer documentaries and I stuff do, like oh, that. I've lived on those podcasts. All of you white women, I don't know yes. what it is with white women and serial killers, but there's some type of thing going on there. I'm just playing around, but but uh, it makes me so I will never not lock my doors. And if a stranger comes up and talks to me, I'm like, run. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is some crazy stuff. But one thing that I've noticed in a lot of those stories, like nine out of 10 it starts out with them abusing animals in yes. some way yes yes yeah. and 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 that is a fact you know that research backs that up so if you don't care about the animals at least care about the children they're going to go on to you know so yeah. that's why it sh- if it's a felony to abuse an animal we can get these people out of the home you know we can ha- have some legal uh discourse that we can actually put them in jail you know find them get them out of the family until but I really don't think that that can be remediated. I think if your brain is that damaged that you get joy from torturing a child or a pet, you can't be remediated. Yeah, there's uh, we the United States needs to pick up on some Texas laws. In in my opinion, yeah. I mean, there's some people out there that I just don't know if you can do anything with if there's if there's any room for change in there's that mind. Not, you know, it, and it's unfortunate. It's the prefrontal cortex. Once it's damaged, it. The, the theory is if it's it, it, it's your social self, you know, your ability to um, go by social norms, you know, behave appropriately in public. And it is 
the first part that's it. Like if you have shaken baby, you like your eyes and your nose are have bony projectiles going inside the skull. The skull's not smooth inside. Mm. So when you're shaking a baby, it's just shearing and tearing up that prefrontal cortex. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in a car wreck as an adult, you'll get some damage to the prefrontal cortex, like when you hit the dashboard or something. If it's damaged in an adult, some good behavior mod can get them back on track again. If mm-hmm. it's damaged as a child, research says that they can never learn that. So I think that's where a lot of your serial killers come from because they start early with you know hurting the animals and stuff. Mm-hmm. They just don't see the reason not to. You know, they don't mm. have that empathy. They don't develop that, which is why mm. we need to make sure children are not in situations to where there might be abuse. You know, if you're seeing that animal being abused by the parent, that child's probably going to be too, you know, shaking and stuff. And shaking baby, you don't notice the symptoms of it until they don't reach the milestones later on. They don't sit upright. They don't walk. They don't talk, you know, on time. Huh. That's, that's interesting because, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you don't see like a lot of adults that all of a sudden turn into serial killers. It's, it usually starts from birth. Starts from birth. Wow, that's weird. Yeah. yeah just, you know, I, I just, I don't, one time I was in a vet, I'm not going to say which vet, but there was a woman in there who actually said the words like, I don't see how y'all pay this much money for animals. To me, it's just a dog. I'm like, lady, you probably don't need to be saying that in here. Like, you are in the wrong spot. We will attack say. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mo- most, like I said, most animals are better than most people. And I think that everybody has some type of animal they can love. I know I have friends that have weird pets out there, like lizards and snakes. snakes. Yeah, snakes is a big one. Even yeah. like spiders and stuff like that. I'm not that way, but they love their tarantula just as much as I love my dog. And yeah. I think that everybody will have some type of animal out there for them. Yeah. And I would find never it. torture one. I mean, I don't like snakes, you know, to the point that even if it's a water hose in the yard, I run screaming because I think it might be a snake. Yeah. But... I would never torture one. You know, I'm just like, you go over there, I'm going to go over here, just move snake. Yeah, I've tried to, uh, see, like, I hate spiders. That was a a big thing to me. And before, like, I would just go ahead and squash them. But now I, like, get them on a piece of paper and take them outside if I have to. I'm terrified the entire time, but I I still make that effort. Bees are one that... uh, I, I, well, not bees, wasps, yeah. waspers. Bees make waspers. honey, and honey is good. See now, and bees won't mess with you. Bees will keep their distance. Waspers, I don't know what it, I don't know why they're so angry. I don't know who hurt them. I, they, that frontal frontal cortex on the, the waspers, yeah. They, yes, they've they've hurt. Are, are they good somehow. for anything? What do they do? What do waspers do? They pollinate? Do? do they do? I don't know what they 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 attack people. I know that. But that is that is one animal that uh yes I will yeah. still kill. Well, I have to look to see if there's any use for wasps. I mean they're here for some reason, but you know, fleas. I don't see the use for a flea. I don't you know. Yeah, and, and fleas are bad this time. I mean, and ticks, ticks. ticks no, I meant ticks. Ticks are the bad one this year. Uh, I had a friend that uh said that she didn't even like her dog didn't even go in the grass it was still just on the sidewalk and already had like three ticks on him yeah and you have to watch for that because you know dogs can get lyme disease just like people you know and people need to watch for themselves when they go out because it is a and you would think with as bad a winter as we had which is supposed to kill all these little critters out they're back in force yeah it's been like a super tick or something that's developed it, it, from this it, yeah who knows who, who knows, knows? it's a tick 19 now <laughs> yeah, who knows <laughs> but but apparently here uh, while wasps provide pest control while they can also kill some beneficial insects they can be helpful in eating crop destroying bugs such as grubs caterpillars and weevils then they need to go somewhere where those are because none of those are in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they need to go find a nice farm and, and live happily there and kill the grubs and the beetles. I don't know what a grub is. I've never heard of that. Grub has always been a... Grub bug? I don't know. Just go eat your grub. I've always heard it as a slang term for food. <laughs> it is. Oh, it's like a little bug like a looking thing. Bug? A lawn grub. That's what they're uh-huh. usually called. They're white. Uh-huh. Hmm. Like a little worm or something? Yeah, it's kind of like like, like a little uh, roly poly. Oh, kind of like those. I haven't seen those things in a few years. What I happened haven't. to roly polies? I know those little that roll up in the, the little shell. I don't 